option, we have a new home screen. So this is what it looks like. So by default, you have access to five screens. Uh, you get this uh, 3D rotation effect as you move around. Uh, and this is, I think, the default home screen. So that's the, the kind of widgets and shortcuts you have when you uh, get a zoom and you turn it on the, for the first time. Uh, we have uh, the old kind of uh, widgets, for instance the clock is the same as it was before with just a new look. And then we have some of the new widgets, so for instance we have the new stack widgets. So this is YouTube, and I can go through, yeah that's the prime when you demo with uh, YouTube, you don't know what's going to show up on screen. <laughs> uh, so you have this stack, it's, it's, really, it's, really, it's really good for casual browsing. Uh, you don't know what you're looking for, you're just going through your, your video and when you see something you like, uh, I don't think I'm going to find something I like, so I'll, 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 I'll switch to another widget. Uh, but this is a good example of what you can do in your application if you have you know, an infinite stream of data uh, that you want the user to go through. Uh, this is the new bookmarks widget uh, that we didn't have before, so you get a grid of icons, so you even see like, screenshots of the web pages. So if you're looking for a particular uh, bookmark, you can very easily find it with this widget. And what's really good and that you, you don't quite see here is um, the new browser application lets you sync your bookmarks with Chrome on the desktop. And if you have folders, for instance, uh, they're supported by the widget. So you can organize your bookmarks in folders and you can navigate the folders all from the home screen. You don't have to go launch the browser. Uh, you can also add, of course, a bunch of new uh, other widgets. So this is our new customization screen. Uh, you get a preview of the widget at the bottom. Uh, this is something I, I'm really happy with because whenever I use, uh, I try to add widgets on my home screen on my phone, I get this, this list with just labels. And I see like, you know, music widgets 4x2, music widget 4x4. I don't know what that means. I don't know what it's going to look like. So now you get a visual preview of what's going to be on your home screen. Uh, so for instance, we could add the Gmail widget. So you can just tap on it to add it to the current home screen. And here you go. So that's a new, that's another example of a new widget where you have a list of items. So we don't have many items to scroll through, but you can imagine what it looks like. Uh, the customization bar lets you also add very quickly shortcuts to applications. You can change your wallpaper, and you can also have access to uh, application shortcuts. For instance, you can get uh, directions to your favorite restaurant on your home screen, uh, your favorite contacts, things like that. Um, about the new application, so I mentioned the browser, so the browser has this awesome new uh, tab experience, so this is what it looks like by default, but you can create new tabs, uh, and we've made a lot of improvements in the browser, and the browser is now fully hardware accelerated, um, so if you access a very complex web page, so for instance the New York Times, and you scroll through, it's a lot smoother than you, you are probably used to on your phone. Um, I mentioned Gmail before, so this is the new Gmail UI. Uh, this is a two-pane UI, so you have your labels on the left, you have your, your, your emails on the right when you tap one. You have these nice smooth animations to open an email. Uh, and you really have to, to, to start using it and, and do uh, a lot of email management to, to get a good feel of what you can do with a tablet application. Uh, we also have a new Gtalk, so I don't think we have contacts in here. Uh, what's interesting about the new Gtalk application is that we have video chat support. So you have the front-facing camera and the back-facing camera. And during a chat, you can switch from one camera to the other. So if you're you know, talking with someone and you want to show them something, instead of having to turn the device around like you would have to do with a laptop, you can just switch the camera. Uh, it's pretty useful. Pardon? Okay, yeah, someone is trying to say something, but hey, I'm on stage. <laughs> we can talk about it at the end. Uh, another, so some of the, another really cool application uh, that was completely relevant for the tablet is the music player. Um, I don't use the standard music player on Android, I use another one that I find prettier. Um, it has the same functionality, and I'm really happy to say that now I'm using the default music player on, on Android 3.0. So we have this new like, 3D effect, so that shows my most recent music that I've added in my collection. Um, and this, for instance, was done using RenderScript, so we'll talk a bit more about RenderScript player. Um, you can also see your albums, uh, so you have access to a 3D grid of albums. And when you tilt, and when you tilt the device, yeah, it's supposed to tilt. Yeah. Yeah. When you tilt it, it goes crazy, so don't do that. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, it turns out that portrait orientation doesn't work on, on that screen. I'll hold it very still. Yeah, everybody in the audience could just go like this for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing. So this is our new task switcher. Uh, that's how you can uh, switch from one application to the other. 
before that, we used to ask you to long press the home key, and then you would just see a few icons. Now you see actual screenshots. It's one click away. Wherever you are on the device, it's just one tap away, and you can actually see what the applications look like. And what's really nice is even if you're, if you're running a game or an OpenGL application or, or a video, you will see a screenshot, a snapshot of the, of the application as you left it. Um, and I think that, oh, yes, there's one last application I want to show you, so YouTube. Let's go back. This is another great example of uh, render screen. So we have the 3D wall of videos. And this is all smooth because it's all done in OpenGL. And I lied, I want to show you one more application. Tell me if you're getting bored. Uh, this is our books application. Once again, render script to have this 3D wall of, of books. And when you open a book, we have a fancy 3D page turn effect that was also implemented using render script. So I believe the way this works is a web view actually renders the pages and then we, we, we display the, the render the web page basically uh, on a 3D mesh using render script to get this, this really cool effect. Uh, and what I like about this page turn effect is that it's, it feels a lot more natural than the page turns I've seen in other applications in the past, like on the desktop for instance. Because uh, I don't know about you, but when I read a book, I don't grab the corner of the page and I go like this. I actually do this motion. But, you know, that's just me. Uh, 